In this video, we're going to go over density problems. So let's start with the first one. A 50 gram rock has a volume of 8.5 milliliters. What is the density of the rock? Feel free to pause the video if you want to work on these problems. Density is equal to mass divided by volume. So the mass of the rock is 50 grams. The volume is 8.5 milliliters. So we just got to divide the two values. 50 divided by 8.5, that's 5.88 grams per milliliter. So that's the density of the rock. So what this means is that one milliliter of this rock has a mass of 5.88 grams. Number two. A metal bar has a density of 7.9 grams per milliliter. If the volume of the bar is 500 milliliters, what is the mass in kilograms? So let's use this equation. D is equal to M over V. Now we're looking for the mass, so let's rearrange the equation. Let's multiply both sides by volume. So on the right side, V will cancel. So therefore, the mass is the density times the volume. And let's look at the units to see why this makes sense. So let's start with the density. The density is 7.9 grams per milliliter. If we multiply that by 500 milliliters, notice how the unit milliliters cancels, leaving us with the unit of grams, which is the unit for mass. So the mass in this problem is going to be 7.9 times 500. So that's going to be 3,950 grams. And so this is the answer. Number three, the dimensions of a rectangular metal bar are six centimeters by eight centimeters by nine centimeters. If the bar has a mass of four kilograms, what is the density of the bar in grams per milliliter and in kilograms per cubic meter? So let's draw a picture. So let's say this is the metal bar. So we have a length of 6 centimeters, a width of 8 centimeters, and a height of 9 centimeters. Now keep in mind, my picture is not drawn to scale, so I just drew a random rectangular bar. Now how can we use this information to find the density of the bar, first in grams per milliliter? So we know that density is equal to mass divided by volume. Now we already have the mass, it's in kilograms, so we need to convert that to grams. So let's start with 4 kilograms. 1 kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. So you want to set it up in such a way that the unit kilograms cancels. So it's going to be 4 times 1,000, so we have a mass of 4,000 grams. Now, we need to calculate the volume in milliliters. The volume of a rectangular box is basically the length times the width times the height. So that's going to be a length of 8 centimeters, a width of 6 centimeters, and a height of 9 centimeters. 8 times 6 is 48, and 48 times 9 is 432. So this is 432 cubic centimeters. And the reason why it's cubic is because centimeters times centimeters times centimeters is centimeters cubed. Each one has an exponent of 1. So if you add 1 3 times, you're going to get 3. Now we need to convert this to milliliters. And it turns out that 1 cubic centimeter is equal to 1 milliliter. So therefore, the volume is 432 milliliters. Now that we have that, Let's go ahead and calculate the density. Let's just clear away a few things. So 
So we have a mass of 4,000 grams and a volume of 432 milliliters. 4,000 divided by 432 is about 9.26 if you round it. So it's 9.26 grams per milliliter. So that's the answer for the first part. Now let's find the density in kilograms per cubic meter. So let's convert it. So let's start with the number that we have, 9.26 grams per milliliter. Let's convert grams to kilograms first. One kilogram, as we know, is equal to 1,000 grams. So the unit grams cancel. Now, in order to go from milliliters to cubic meters, we want to convert milliliters into cubic centimeters first. As you mentioned before, one milliliter is the same as one cubic centimeter. And so these units are gone now. Now let's convert centimeters into meters. A hundred centimeters is equal to one meter. Now notice that we have centimeters cubed. So what we need to do is raise this to the third power, or basically multiply everything by a hundred three times. So it's 9.26 divided by 1,000 times 100 times 100 times 100 for a total of three times. So it's 9,260 kilograms per cubic meter. Now when dealing with density, this is a common conversion that you'll see. So if you want to quickly go from grams per milliliter to kilograms per cubic meter, all you need to do is multiply by 1,000 if you just want a quick answer. Or you can follow the steps that we uh, just performed here in this video. So that's it for this problem. Number four, a 25 gram rock is placed in a graduated cylinder with water. The volume of the fluid rises from 18.3 milliliters to 21.4 milliliters. Calculate the density of this rock in grams per milliliter. So let's draw a picture. So let's say if we have a graduated cylinder with some water in it. And then we're going to take a rock. And we're going to place this rock inside the cylinder. So what's going to happen is the volume is going to increase. So the water level is going to rise once you place the rock inside of the cylinder. So previously the water level was 18.3 milliliters and now it rose to 21.4 milliliters. So the difference in volume is equal to the volume of the rock. So the volume of the rock is going to be 21.4 minus 18.3 and that's about 3.1 milliliters. So now that we have the volume of the rock and we also have the mass of the rock we can now calculate the density of the rock. So the density is mass divided by volume. So that's 25 grams divided by 3.1 milliliters, which is about 8.06 grams per milliliter. So that's the density of the rock. That's how you can find it by water displacement. Number five, a spherical ball of radius 2.5 centimeters has a mass of 15 grams. Will the ball sink or float in pure water? And we're given the density of pure water, it's one gram per milliliter. So let's say this is a sphere with the radius r. We could find the volume of a sphere using this equation. It's four thirds pi r cubed. And we're given the radius. So we have everything we need to find the volume of the sphere. So it's four thirds pi times 2.5 centimeters raised to the third power. 2.5 to the third power 
is about 15.625. And then multiply that by pi times 4 divided by 3. You should get 125 pi over 6, which, as a decimal, that's 65.45 cubic centimeters. So that's the volume of the sphere. Now that we have it, we can calculate the density of the sphere. So density is mass divided by volume. The mass of the sphere is 15 grams. And so let's divide it by 65.45 cubic centimeters. So the density of the sphere is 0.229 grams per cubic centimeter, which is the same as grams per milliliter. So keep in mind, a cubic centimeter and one milliliter are about the same. So now that you have the density of the sphere, if you place the sphere in water, will it sink or will it float? Now you know that heavy objects sink, light objects float. And it's based on density. If you have an object that has a density that's greater than 1, it's going to sink. Water can't support its weight. But for objects that have a density that's less than 1, it's going to float. So because the density is less than 1, it's less than the density of water, the sphere is going to float in pure water. Number 6. The density of diamond is 3.51 grams per milliliter, and 1 carat is 0.2 grams. If an 8.5 carat diamond is added to a graduated cylinder containing 54.3 milliliters of water, to what volume level will the water in the cylinder rise? So let's draw a picture. So here's the cylinder, and there's some water in it. And so we're going to add a diamond to it. Once we add the diamond, our goal is to figure out what the new volume of the water and the diamond is going to be. So right now, the water level is at 54.3. We need to find the new volume once we add the diamond to it. So it's always good to draw a picture, either on paper or mentally in your head. Now that you have the picture, you know what we need to do. Our goal is to find the volume of the diamond. Once we have it, we can add it to the volume of water, and that's going to give us the volume the volume level in the cylinder, which is the volume of the water plus the diamond combined. So how can we find the volume of the diamond? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to get the mass. We know that density is mass over volume. So let's rearrange the equation to find volume. Let's multiply both sides by V. So volume times density is equal to the mass. Now, if we divide both sides by D, we can see that the volume is the mass divided by the density. We have the density of diamond. It's 3.51. What we need to get is the mass in grams. Now, we have the mass in carats, but we can convert that to grams. So let's start with 8.5 carats. I'm going to put CT for carats. Now, one carat is about 0.2 grams. So these units cancel. So it's going to be 8.5 times 0.2. So therefore, the mass is 1.7 grams. Now, let's calculate the volume. So it's going to be the mass, 1.7 grams, divided by the density, which is 3.51 grams per milliliter. So this will give us a volume of 0.484 milliliters. Now that we have the volume, we can now find 
the volume level of the water in the cylinder. So the total volume, it's going to be the volume of the water that was already there, which is 54.3, plus the increase in volume due to the addition of the diamond in the water. That's 0.484. So 54.3 plus 0.484, that's going to be about, if you round it, 54.8. So that's the new volume level once the diamond has been added to the graduated cylinder. Number seven, the density of aluminum is 2.7 grams per milliliter. If the length and width of a 1.08 kilogram aluminum bar are 5 centimeters by 8 centimeters, then what is the height of the aluminum bar? So let's draw a picture. So we have the length, which is 8 centimeters, and we have the width. Our goal is to find the height. In order to do that, we need to find the volume of this bar. And to do that, we need the mass and we need the density. But first, we need the mass in grams. So let's convert kilograms into grams. So we know that one kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. So 1.08 times 1,000, that's 1080. So that's the mass in grams. Now we could find the volume. We say that density is mass divided by volume. So the volume is going to be mass divided by density, as you mentioned early in this video. The mass is 1080, and the density is 2.7 grams per milliliter. So the volume is 400 milliliters, which is the same as 400 cubic centimeters. So now that we have the volume, we can now find the height. So for a rectangular prism, the volume is equal to the length times the width times the height. The volume is 400 cubic centimeters. The length is 8 centimeters. The width is 5. And we can find the height. 8 times 5 is 40, and 400 divided by 40 is 10, so the height is 10 centimeters, and that's the answer.